Hello, are you preparing for the Praxis General Science exam? My name is Derek Masiaga, science teacher with study.com, and I'm going to walk you through some example chemistry problems in this video. Let's get started. Problem 1. Ammonia gas will readily dissolve in liquid water to create a basic aqueous solution of ammonia. Which terms correctly describe why ammonia has good solubility in water? A. Ammonia is polar and water is nonpolar. B. Ammonia and water are both polar. C. Water is nonpolar and ammonia is polar. Or D. Ammonia and water are both nonpolar. Okay, so this is a, a problem that's testing our knowledge of solubility, the fact that things can dissolve in one another. And the first thing that comes to my mind when it comes to how something dissolves into something else is the phrase like dissolves like. And what that means is if we want something to dissolve into something, they both either have to be polar or they both have to be nonpolar. Okay? So in this case, we, we kind of have to have the knowledge that water is a polar molecule. And so if water is a polar molecule and we can dissolve something in that water, it means that that thing itself is also polar. So the correct answer here is going to be option B, ammonia and water are both polar. And remember, polar just means that it has an electric, a partially electric charge to it. And so the reason why um, water has a partial charge to it is just its structure Oxygen is kind of going to, is pretty negative, um, so it's going to have a partial negative charge, whereas the um, hydrogens themselves are going to have kind of a partial positive charge. Question two. A solution is prepared by dissolving 0.5 moles of sucrose in 2.8 kilograms of ethanol. What is the sucrose molality? A, 5.6 mole. B, 0.5 mole, C, 1.4 mole, D, 0.18 mole. And so they're testing us on our understanding of molality. The equation of molality is moles per kilogram. Now you're not going to have a calculator, the use of a calculator on this exam. And so we're going to have to just do a little bit of mental math here, especially with our option choices. So we have 0 0.5 moles and we have 2.8 kilograms. And so if I'm taking 0 0.5 and I'm dividing it by 2.8, I know that my answer has to be less than 0 0.5. Okay, because I'm dividing that 0 0.5 by a number greater than it. Okay, we could round, you could round up to, you know, 2.8 2 can round up to 3 here. So 0 0.5 divided by 3 into 3 parts has to be less than 0 0.50 itself. And so the only answer choice that I'm looking at here that is less than 0 0.5 is option D, 0 0.18. Question 3. A student wants to determine the identity of an unknown everyday solution. Before conducting tests, the student is advised to avoid smelling or tasting the solution. The solution turns litmus paper red, feels wet rather than slippery, and shows reactivity as a proton donor. The student demonstrates that the solution would be effective in creating a buffer solution. This solution is most likely A. Bleach, B. Vinegar, C. Battery acid, or D. Tap water. So in the problem, we get a bunch of characteristics of this solution. So the very first one that really sticks out to me is that the solution turns litmus paper red. And so what that means is that we are looking for an acid because acids turn litmus paper red and bases turn litmus paper blue. We also see that it shows reactivity as a proton donor and it's going to be effective in creating a buffer solution. And so what a proton donor means is that it's just going to be able to donate hydrogen ions. And a buffer solution, or at least an effective buffer solution, means that we're going to be working with a weak 
acid. So out of our four options here, we're trying to find one that is acidic, it's gonna do donate uh, protons, and it's a weak acid. So I can already eliminate tap water because tap water is neutral. I can also already cross out or eliminate bleach because bleach is a strong base. So between vinegar and battery acid, our best option here is going to be B vinegar. Battery acid is a strong acid and will would not make a good buffer solution. And vinegar checks out all of our boxes. It's an acid, it's going to donate those um, protons, and it's a weak acid. Question four. Solid potassium hydroxide is dissolved in liquid water to create an aqueous solution with a pOH of 1.2. What is the solution pH? A, 14.0, B, 1.2, C, 12.8, or D, 7.0? So this question is testing our knowledge of pH and pOH. And it turns out that the equation, if you recall, pOH plus the pH equals 14. So since we're given the pOH 1.2, we can just apply the equation and solve for the pH. So in this case, we're gonna subtract 1.2, and so our pH comes out to be 12.8. And that is the correct answer. All right, I hope this video was helpful. If you're looking for more ways to study, check out our other videos, and then also make your way over to study.com to check out our Praxis Test Prep courses. As a study.com member, you'll get full access to hundreds of practice problems like the ones I just walked you through, plus targeted instruction for any topics that you're still struggling with, as well as test strategy to help you maximize your score on test day. Finally, we wanna hear from you. Please like and subscribe if today's video was helpful, and then let us know down below in the comments if there are any specific topics that you want us to cover next. Good luck and happy studying.